Hi there, my name is Fatula, your host here at All Things Agile, and today I am bringing you the consideration of should you become an Agile coach? Sure, it has been all the rage these days. You see that on LinkedIn, lots of position hiring for Agile coach. And with that eminence, a lot of misconceptions also come to light. Agile coaching is most likely not what most people think. I will link somewhere in here to a video that I made two years ago explaining what Agile coaching is. But in today's video, what I'm going to do is address five things that I think you should be asking yourself if you're really serious about pursuing Agile coaching as a career. And I'll link somewhere in the description down below as well, a blog post that I wrote on it in which I actually have a total of 10 questions to ask yourself when you consider, should I become an Agile coach? Do you have knowledge and practical experience in Agile? That is a first for me, honestly, because on the same way that you wouldn't hire in a professional hockey league, you wouldn't hire a coach that doesn't know any hockey, that never played hockey before. So the agile coach must have firsthand experience with agile. My experience, for example, when I started back then, uh, I was a software developer using extreme programming, eventually a team lead as well in the world of XP. So I applied Agile first and then I transitioned. I did not start it as an Agile coach. And this is not a matter of elitism. It is actually for your own good. From your day one as filling a position as an Agile coach, you are going to be expected to be able to help people to learn and adopt Agile ways of working. That means that there's a lot of expectations for you to already know several techniques and how to apply them and how to teach them and how to help people understand what lies behind it and help people how to think differently so that they can use these techniques. Set yourself up for success by gaining agile experience as a practitioner before you take on coaching. Are you able to discuss the undiscussable? You, the agile coach, need to feel comfortable probing and challenging ideas, assumptions, ways of doing. You will work with people that actually consider certain things taboo or they would rather not upset the difficult people. But nothing should be undiscussable among teams across departments or with the CEO of the company. So not only you, the Agile coach, must feel comfortable being the one who start and conduct those difficult conversations, but you also have to be rather skilled at it. If you are not skilled at it, what can happen is that you'll actually challenge those ideas in a way that you're challenging the people themselves in a way that feels personal and then they get defensive and that is really not helpful. So other people can hide behind what is undiscussable, not the Agile coach. Do you enjoy the spotlight? The Agile coach is not the person getting all the praises and all the kudos. The team does, and that is correct. That is by design. Collaboration in Agile is really a must, and the Agile coaching in helping the team to properly work together toward results is in a way joining forces not being the center of the attention. There is nothing wrong with being in the spotlight and enjoying that. And people who are very competitive, they really seek high levels of praise and recognition. And other people really do enjoy hierarchies as well. But it is not compatible with agile coaching. Um, there is not, you know, the agile coach is not a trampoline position for some sort of hierarchical career growth. Um, in fact, there is a ton of lateral leadership, not positional authority that is employed by the agile coach. The ability to converse, to influence, to listen and to make others listen to, this is really a powerful position, a powerful stance, but it is from the sidelines. Agile coaches work themselves out of a job by helping people thrive in agility in the face of change. At some point, and it might take just a month or 10 years, the Agile coach will really become redundant and it is time to move on to another team or even to an entirely different company. What do you enjoy more? 
to talk or to listen. If you know a thing or two about coaching, you know that coaches mostly listen. And when they speak, they are economic and they speak after they realize that that thing that they want to say is actually helpful in that particular circumstance for the team or for the individual being coached. Agile coaches observe a lot, ask questions, and they do that to make people gain awareness and to think. They don't do that to just poke and probe and ask away. That is rather disruptive. You need to be comfortable with silence and you really need to make friends with it if you want to become an agile coach. Read the room, notice what is not said, notice body language, who is not around in the room, etc. Remember that when you're speaking, you're not what? Listening. How much empathy do you really have? Are you ready to help the developers and the product owners? but maybe you have an antipathy for management? Think again. Agile coaches help the entire organization in the end. And they need to speak with people at different levels, basically in all levels of the organization. So to build rapport and create safe spaces everywhere, you need to have empathy for everybody. Do you find it hard? Like, why can't people just follow this technique? It is so simple. Well, remember that up to yesterday, the knowledge that they had was considered amazing. And now, all of a sudden, many of them are back to being beginners once more. People do value reputation and status, even if those mean different things for different people. It is really hard to change if you consider even when you are already proactively invested in the change. Can you imagine how hard it is for those who are being imposed on in agile transformation? Empathy is a skill and the agile coach needs loads of it to be effective. These are five important traits to consider if you want to become an agile coach. The good news is they are all skills. They can all be developed. And there are five more that I would like for you to consider. And they are explored in the blog post down below. So go check it out. I love being an agile coach and it, it is hard work. It does take a lot of time to develop the skills. You really have to be practicing them every day, but it is rewarding. And for those of you who already have some experience with Agile out there, if you were considering becoming an Agile coach, I can't help with that. Um, All Things Agile has an online coaching program, 100% online. It is live, it is interactive. So check more of the links down below to know more when we are opening registration. And also consider being part of our newsletter if you don't want to miss a thing from content that I give you to courses and other dates and interesting stuff. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about the 10 questions I propose in the blog um, that you should be asking yourself if you are considering becoming an Agile coach? I'll stop here for now and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.